Hey guys, and uh, welcome back. And uh, I'm gonna continue on with the Cushman Meter Maiden, get some more stuff knocked out on it. And one of the questions that keep coming up is, uh, what are you gonna do with it after it's all said and done? I don't know. <laughs> have fun with it for now. Uh, but it is registered. I do have it. It's already been registered. It does not have an inspection sticker on it. But uh, we're working on getting the body and its bits and pieces up to the point where we can get inspection. So last where we left off in the other video, we got into the heater was the last thing we were working on. See if we get that fan blower motor that was down in that corner to up and run. And we kind of did, and uh, that's where this project has left off. I was working on a couple of other things, one being that snow blower. But back on it again, and uh, we're gonna start working on some other things. One thing is to get the valves adjusted as far as um, not having the heating blower in the way it'll be easier to get to that and i want to uh wash this thing out due to all the mouse crap and piss and everything that was in it in the heating system and actually throughout the whole thing get it cleaned but um it is winter time here my pressure washer is put away blown out for the winter time hoses are all blown out and stuff for the winter time but local to me is a car wash that you put the quarters in and you can go get it uh you know use their system and uh, get it cleaned out so that's the attempt is trying to get this so it's good enough we can kind of run it down the road run it to the uh where the car wash is and have that done uh, a couple of people commented of putting vinegar in the heater box and it'll help kind of neutralize and kill that i do have some laying on the floor over here that i tried to use in the carb cleaner those two jugs that one and that one so i figured we'll use those guys up for help to uh I don't know, <laughs> douching it. <laughs> We're going to douche it out with uh, vinegar and uh, hopefully kind of clear that system out and kind of just wash the rest of the crap off the whole thing. You know, it's got just junk everywhere. In there, get the tires out of it, wash the outside of it, wash the body of it down, what we can, and then we'll be able to start getting into the, uh, the ceiling of the body and the ceiling of the underneath. But before we get there, I know I'm yapping a bit, we're going to go jump on a couple of other little things while it's in here, while the garage is warm, warming up before we adjust the valves and I have to run it and make the garage smell like exhaust, is uh, I figure we're going to go work on the lights. We'll try getting all the lights operating correctly, the directionals and all. You can see the two of them are pretty much busted off the front of them. There's two lenses in the back. I don't know what kind of shape they are in, but uh, I think we'll start troubleshooting, getting that stuff squared away. I got this uh, machine from Harvey Spooner. He had two of them, and with the two of them, he had the other one that had new front lights on. So I figure we will take these guys and do what we need to do. Check, see if we can get these to operate, and uh, we'll install them. So without further ado, let's go get her. Hey, goodbye trusty jumper pack out not much meat left on these wires but let's see if we can kind of get on these things and see if they do anything rip the wire up that's enough on there and we use the screwdriver for a pro power's already on on the pack let's see if this guy will that one works these are just directionals they're not um Not like running lights or anything. Might have to uh, open them up anyway just to get a little bit more length on those wires. And does number two want to play? I would think 50 50. Five. Nope. No good on that ball. Let's go crack that one open and see what's going on. Pretty sure that's the one that wasn't working. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, crack this thing open. Yeah. Let's see what we get. Hmm, I see more screws from the back. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Why would you run screws from the front and the back? Let's go take those out and see what happens. 
We'll learn to we'll learn together. <laughs> Anything a whack of a screwdriver a couple of times? See so if we can get it to crack. There you go. Well, that's kind of a weird setup, isn't it? And let me get my light down here. We'll see if. Do not see it burnt across that bulb. Let's go give her some voltage. No, you guys can't see, can you? There you go. Is the pack still on? Pack still on. That's where I zap myself. So the bulb's good. Let's see. We have a wire or a socket issue. Actually, that socket. Got some heebie-jeebies down in there. Some kind of cobweb. Let's go uh, clean that up a little bit. I wonder if I can get that right out of there. And maybe even lengthen that wire. What do you think? That's all full of cobwebs. That's what I'm going to do while we got this apart. We take that guy. I have a feeling that has been is so concave that it's making it hard to contact the uh, the bulb. So we'll flip that guy over like that. That'll make a good contact on the bulb, and we'll put a longer piece of wire on that so that we can uh, wire it to the buggy. We only have one good bracket on the body of that thing. So we're gonna have to make one. So we might as well get that out of our way too. And either we'll weld this one up with the partial. I think there's a partial on the other one too. Yeah. And what's left of that one? We'll make. I make one up. I throw that in the sandblaster. If you guys can see down the, the center of that. Looking a little on the on the cruddy side. Yeah, let's see if we can lengthen that puppy a little bit. Get some shrink tubing on that. You know, I got to do that to the other one too. But that should be enough wire. What do you think? Let's go put that back together and uh, see if we recovered. That should go in there. Yeah, we get to be good. Yeah, spring feels pretty good. I sandblasted the socket, like I said. And look at that. Let's go back with power on the power pack. A ground. And a hop. A rat. Ready to rock and roll. Alright, so both of those uh, lights are ready to rock and roll. 
other than brackets. But I figure we'll go and chase power on this. Which I think what might be the best bet. I think uh, we'll go flasher should run both of them. I don't know if the key needs to be on. If the key needs to be on. Yeah. Can I go reserve? There we go. I just didn't want power going to the the coil burning up the uh, points. So that'll be good. And we'll get a test light. And we'll probe this guy and this guy. We'll see if we get anything kind of coming out of him first. If that's the case, it'll be easy. If not, then uh, we'll chase back. And I would think the uh, flasher system on this thing would be like really heavy duty because you figure it would be on like most of the time, right? We need ground. See any shiny, <laughs> see any shiny metal anywhere? I know. I might have to make some. Let's try that. Nothing. I don't know if we got good ground. I'm gonna go take a whiz wheel. We're gonna go clean off a little spot out here somewhere and uh, get that for us. The back's working. Let's give ourselves a little. We wanna go right. Just ruined the patina. I'm gonna put some rubber pads there anyway. Right, let's see if that was our issue. There you go. That's that one. How lucky you think we're gonna be on this one? Hmm. <laughs> I think we have to gut that one anyway, so let's get all that crap off of there and see if uh, that one works. Maybe we should just even just try the bulb and get that one out of there. Yeah, let's see if we can get that socket out of there. I should probably, you know what I'm gonna do? Shut it off. So that, I'm gonna go the arc of the socket out. Damn it. There we go. It's looking pretty cruddy, but let's, uh, uh, we want to do put the test light down the middle of it. Let's turn it back on. As long as we don't touch the side, it's kind of like the game operation. Let's see if that little nipple flashes, which it does. Let's see if we can work, work maybe a little smarter instead of harder. <laughs> no. I think that one's got the same problem too, that the little nylon piece on the bottom of it is concave. I'm gonna take a minute to try clean that socket up, put the bowl back in, see if we can get that one to recover before we try ripping this thing off of here. I ended up taking that off of there anyway, because of the fact that I need to make another one of these brackets because uh, he had to hack the ones off that were there. His, the other machine was sitting in the middle of the field. He wasn't about to go crawling underneath there. So this, which one's better? Yeah, probably about the same. So this is that part of it right there. You see where he kind of hacked around it to get the slide out from underneath the screw, but then the, the drop is missing and the kickback is gone. So I think between the two of them, I'm going to try hacking this bracket up and we'll see if we can make the rest of it up to kind of match that. And I needed it off to kind of go do that anyhow. So I'm probably going to pull those two screws. We'll get this bracket right off and we'll, we'll make one, a new one up. I hammered them out a little bit. So this is the one that we need to make. Here's parts of the one that we have. So we'll use that. And I figure we'll take this part of this one. We'll line that bend up to there. Cut that guy off. Right about there should be good. We'll run a straight line from that. Slice that. We'll weld those together. And then I'll rebend this one. We will slice it off. Right about there. See how that does for us. Yeah, let's see if we can make that the right size.
What do you think? Look, I'm close enough for a match. I'm gonna weld that one down there. I think I got to put another hole. I got to elongate that guy a little bit, maybe. Let's see if we can buzz those back together. Try to get a tack probably on the two outer sides, and then we'll fill it in. Got to go a little hotter. Yeah, I need a more. Might stitch it. Burn through. backfill and yeah, we'll buzz it up make it a little on the flatter side maybe so you get untangled here there you go oh yeah noise alert don't touch that it's hot what do you think Close enough? Yeah, it should do it. I think about closing that in, but I think we're just gonna put a washer behind it. We'll be fine. I'm thinking about actually welding the washer on it, but yeah, screw it. That should be good enough. Which one of you said paint it? Paint it? Are you kidding me? Come on now. Being silly. The crown's off the um the bracket, so we're going to give it a little bit of a fighting chance. Noise alert. <laughs> Where it bolts together. I'll just throw some grease on those when I bolt them up. Well, ain't that a sexy thing? Alright, let's see what we get. <laughs> we got one of the two. Alright. Getting warm. How about directional? Let's try turn the hazards off. That one. Hmm. So whatever it is is uh issue getting power to that guy because you know the wire works. There's only one wire in it. So that's one directional. Switch it over to the other one. The indicator works up there. The other one's kind of going, kind of. Let's see what we get in the back. Kind of looks like it's doing what it's doing. It's just when I go to do the uh, the hazards. Switch that off, and this is the hazards. That I get three out of the four. Not quite sure why that is. And there's only one wire going to that light, so we're gonna have to go search a little bit. But one thing that is kind of going on is it has neither one of these is the uh, the four-way flasher. These are both four like directionals. Let's uh, shut that off. Turn that on. It's like you could hear them clicking. This one's warm. And this one's nothing. So I got these two guys. I don't know if they're good or bad or indifferent. Figure maybe we'll go plug those in and we'll just see what we get. And uh, see if that maybe helps some of the issue. Or is, has somebody been in here, <laughs> judging by the looks of these wires and something may not be tied together quite like it should. And that's kind of my, uh, my guesstimation at the moment. As I swap those two guys out, and now you can hear this one. Now you can hear it clicking better. And it gives a much better, you know, steady flash. And that's true for uh, left and right. In the back. But I still don't know what the other one does. This one. Not quite sure what the purpose of that is. The only thing I can think of, it still does have these two lights up here. 
I don't know if those are going to be kind of like a flasher of some sort too, or if they're just a brake light or what they are. So I have a feeling maybe that's what that other circuit is for and why the one has a light in the front. We should check that again. Yeah, I don't know why this guy's not working. Maybe up in the switch or something. I'm not that concerned about that. I don't think this is registered as a motorcycle. Motorcycles do not need four ways, but I would like to get them to work. And the horn. <laughs> kind of works. We just need whatever was got removed from that button. Should bring that back to life. So I'm going to do a little bit more chase. I think we're going to jump over. Maybe we'll try figuring out what these guys are. And maybe we can get them to operate of some sort. I'm probably going to follow that wire back and see where it goes. Alright, so in chasing those, I decided just to follow the wire back. Uh, that guy. It goes all the way down, around here, down, around. And it ties into there, and then the wire goes the other direction. And then it goes back up to this switch. And this is that other relay that we weren't sure what it was doing and where it was going, so now we know. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I may take the jumper pack. I don't know. I'll jump back on my test light. I'll see where I got power to. And I'll try hooking power just right to this wire and see if any of that stuff lights up and maybe chase bulbs and grounds on the sockets to get that part of it working. And then maybe switches or fuses or whatever we got down here. There's one thing I wanted to show though. It was really cool. I think it's cool. It's a good idea. They took, um, you know, solderless connector with the bolt with the eye lube. I think I, I got them on the other side. Let's go walk over the other side. I have them unbolted when I was straightening, straightening this frame. So they took the bolts that bolt it together and this is what it is. They, all they did was run it through one of the uh, eye loops. Eye loops. I, you know what I mean. And uh, they just use that part of it to screw to the chassis and that's what guides the wire, keeps the wire out of harm's way. There really is no place to go put it, but I, I thought that's actually kind of a good idea to use that um, and using the combination of the bolts for a guide. Let's say it's unbolted right now. Seems like it worked. Well, it's not working right now, but dead spider. Yeah. All right, let me give you some power to that. Let's go see what we got and we'll move on. So the jumper pack to ground is just grounded to the engine and this is the hot side. And I'm just using this for my power source, you know, if you wanted to use the battery uh, that's in it. But this is just, I just find it's more convenient. I think we're on, yeah, we're on. So this, hold on there, guys get too close. So this wire right here is this wire that runs up to the lights. And if we clip that, those should light up or at least have power go to them. And see it draw. That's drawing some sparks on something. Something turned on. Let's go see. I don't see anything on that one. I saw a spark. I mean, it made a spark and blew the bulb out at the same time, too. No dash lights are on, right? Oh, no, there is. There it goes. You get both? <laughs> lucky day, lucky day. All right, so more than likely, they, they probably jumped off the ignition switch. I don't know if you're watching the earlier videos, the ignition switch was all kind of screwed up. I bet you it picks power up off of that, whatever this is. That probably runs across to the key switch, brings power to here, and then power goes out here, out of the switch through here. And then this is just a relay on the inside of it. It has a piece of by metal it's a piece of metal that as it heats up it kind of like spring steel but it pops back and forth it cools off makes the contact is right here I don't, you know imagine it but then that's the other end of the contact so on the inside of the switch it's making contact but it's drawing a lot of current heats up pops away for a second cools off goes back heats up pops the other direction. So that's how the, the inside of that switch is working. What's happening inside these. It's essentially just a set of points. And most of the time what happens is the the points just get like cruddy on the end of them or they burn up over time or the, it was just left on in, in one position and it kind of burned up. Um, and then the speed of them is kind of 
preset by the load that is on it. So if there's four bulbs in the circuit, we'll say each one drawing so much current, um, it kind of is calibrated to click, you know, 50, 50 on that resistance. And then if you get a bulb that goes out, it's like, that's how come, you know, like on your, on your old car, when you turn your flasher on one direction, it's flashing faster than it is on the other direction. It means one of your bulbs are out because it uh, heats up, cools off faster because it's the, 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 you know what I'm talking about. You got to buy it by now. Anyway, so that's what's happening inside. It's changing how fast that thing clicks back and forth by how much draw is put on it. Now that, that went on a ranch. Where were we? <laughs> we were going to go figure out. Uh, what we got to get power coming across here. I'm going to work over your shoulder a little bit. Hope you don't mind me breathing down your neck. So what I decided to do was uh, get a test light. Test light. And we go to my jumper pack. It powers up. But I also have the key on and the battery that's inside the uh, machine. Like we don't, we really don't need the jumper pack at all. We could shut it off. All depends on what circuit I um, want to test, you know. So I'm want to test if I'm getting power from the scooter going to the switch. This is the inline fuse that was installed. I'm looking for the fuse right now. For demonstration purposes, there it is. All right. I'm giving you a reach around. Okay. So that's the holder. This is coming from, I think, the switch. The key switch this one is going up to the switch that you would turn on and off and send power to the to the uh lights um actually power to the relay the relay will click and then up to the lights so we i'm gonna probe that and we have power coming to it so we know that part of the circuit's okay the keys are okay we're getting power over to here we're going to check across the fuse and I'm just going to keep probing power. I'll probe it back to here. Actually, I might be able to do that when you're here. I'm going to take a second to clean that socket up, but let's, um, I, I'm surmising it's either going to be the switch or the, the relay. So this is the wire coming out of the, the relay. Turn that on. Not getting anything. Let's uh, see if we can. Make sure, this is where I stab myself in the finger. I got power on that side of it. Some people hate when I do that. Too bad. Now across the fuse, I got power going across the fuse the other side. So I got it going up to the switch, but I have nothing coming out of the switch. Let's get this pulled out of the back, um, out of there, and we'll take a look at that. And that switch is down. And yeah, we should have power to there. And we don't. Do we still have power to where we probed it? Or am I wiggling the crap out of it, making that fuse hole again? I'm not going to stab myself. Alright. Key's on? Yes, key's still on. Nothing here. Let's make sure our test light is still working. That we lose the ground on the other end, because sometimes that happens. Nope, oh, light's still working. Alright, so... We need to make sure we get power out of Okay. Got power on that side. Got power on that side. But we do not have power there. So somewhere in here we're losing it. That wire inside there. I got it. Let's just probe real good, right? Stuff it in it. Probably cutting it out of there anyway, right? I thought I saw it light up, didn't you? <laughs> this is all part of it. It's all part of trying to troubleshoot. And you go back. Make sure after that crash you didn't lose it. And you did. Nope. Okay, so we got it there. We do not have it there. I'm stabbed dead center into that thing. And there's no power coming out of that wire. So between there and there, we lost it somehow. 
That's where our, that's where our deficiency is. So that wire is not like that. I'm gonna see if I have another uh, fuse holder. If not, we're maybe come up with something else. Well, I was looking for one of those old school type holders, but I couldn't find one of those. But I get a modern, you know, one of the flat speed fuse style ones. It's a 30 amp one, so it's fairly hip. I'm going to cut up a wire and uh, put an end on it. We'll set that up on there. And uh, we, also, we still have to make sure that the switch is good, too. We don't know that for sure. The only thing we know that is power is not getting to it. But uh, I may uh, ohm this out. We'll see if this is okay. Let's uh, see what we got. I really want Holmes. Hey Holmes. We're just gonna clip both ends of the switch. It's open. Bitch you wheeling around, yeah. So uh, the contacts are kinda dirty inside this. Should be open. That's the witch looking kind of suspect. <laughs> Got the old. Let's see if it comes back. I think we might be looking for a switch to put in there too. Yeah, I'm not trusting that. All right. So we're not going to wire to that, are we? And while I was uh, poking around in the hoard, I did find a uh, plate light, and this thing does not have one on it. And it's going to need one to get a sticker. So, we got one. Ah, the hoard. How's that for some nice old switch? Hopefully we could find a simple one. That's maybe a three-way. No. Yeah. That one might. We'll put that one in and running. We have to be roughly the size. Who says it has to pull in and out, right? <laughs> no, that's a joke there. What do you think? Want to go with this one? I don't see anything else. That's not true. Alright, we'll go with that. I'm going to go with that. <laughs> the laboratory. That'd be cool for some other projects. Alright. I'm gonna go throw some wires on that. Actually, I'm gonna go, let's go check that. How does that sound? Let me make sure that that guy is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're on homes. Yeah. Well, that's more like it. Yeah. You're looking for Essentially, that's infinity or open, and then you're looking for close to zero as you can get. But you got to watch the sign on the side, so it goes meg k and zero. So it may say you know five, but if it says five meg, it's very high resistance, and uh, you know five ohms is a difference. So right there is just zeroed right out. Get the idea? So that's what I was looking for in the switch to make sure that that was still working. All right. And make sure there's enough room under the, da the dash maybe that one's a little bit more square so i get that fuse holder out of that package and i come over here looking for the fuses for trying to find a nice high one up there and while i'm looking at the fuses you see it yet all right <laughs> two of those fuse holders i was looking for that's what i wanted one of those the hoard all right back to into the cart we need to we need to put the key on and i gotta remember put the battery charger on there so that should be the power coming from the key switch here's my test light is my test light still working actually i'm gonna see if i have power to the switch i do through the switch turn it on I don't. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Does it go side to side? No. 
<laughs> That's true. On, off. That should be on. Where does it go? There it goes. <laughs> All right. And into this. And then out of this. This might make this click. Is that enough of a draw? Let's hook that guy back up again. Now these are the wires going up to the roof that we know already work. It's not clicking. Want to try another one? Let's go try the one that we took out that we know that worked but worked real fast. On the directionals. even see if it's lighting up, huh? No. They are not on. So let's probe again. I do not have power. I wonder if I blew the fuse. Wouldn't have been too light. I think so. Now I don't have power coming over on that wire. What did I do? But there's another fuse. If, this, if there was another fuse up further, they're gonna be pissed because that's gonna mean. All right, what are you doing to me? As if there's another fuse upstream, I didn't need this one. All right. All right. Where are we? Oh, you son of a. <laughs> No good. You sure that's good? Take that, you bastard. Alright, I gotta fondle under the dash. I have a feeling wherever this is going is kind of turning on and off on me. And the more I'm wiggling around, the more it's kind of doing that to me, is my. Alright, you wanna know what it was? something I am not a big fan of it's uh, those type of connectors I hate those kind of connectors and that's exactly what's happening as we're wiggling it around that wire is kind of making it and not making it this thing just kind of pinches both sides of it through the cable and, uh, I'm not a very big fan of them uh, I'm gonna do something with that I'm gonna make sure we get wire power continuously coming down that wire make sure we're not losing it somewhere else too but I am I feel fairly decent. That, that is it. Where's the rest of that go? Up, up and away. Pretty good to the key. Yeah, so I think our issue is right there. I'll even show you. I'm not a big fan of those. Eh? Can you see the test light? Watch, I'll wiggle around the, uh, the connector up there. Where am I? So, sometimes even like a you know you go for bumps and stuff and you stuff that works intermittently. Yeah. Stereos, turn on and off. I have no idea how this is going to work, but we're going to try. <laughs> you guys are looking through the magnifying glass that I'm looking through, so that I could show you that what I'm talking about while we're uh, looking at it. I need a pointer. Okay, so. This is that connector taken out of it. This is the wire that we were wiggling around, was kind of cutting in and out. And what you do is you fold this, you, one wire is a continuous one, that one, the one you're picking power off of, and one you stick in as far as you see, like that. Well, this metal tab sits proud. It's, it's sitting up like a little guillotine. It's sitting up in the air here. You come by with pliers and you squeeze the thing down, it pinches into the wires. And then it's got a cap that goes over the top of it. That's how they work, but the issue is how much surface area you kind of get in contact with the wire. I don't know if it's showing or not. 
every time I try to go close on this camera the zoom doesn't work very well so we're trying something different but you can see the gap that's in there screwdriver fits down in there so how much of that really pinches that wire on the sides you know it touches it there and there but over time it starts kind of wiggling around and kind of you know make and not make so and I would say it's a success it's got that flasher in it though that was faster so we could probably change that up by just changing that guy out but finally we got the circuit I think I have to drill this I might have to drill this a hair longer it's gonna be tight I gotta run that nut in too yeah, I'm going to go step that up, but just, uh, yeah. step it, open that up. And I think uh, we got it. We can tuck some of that stuff back up underneath the dash. Doctor's orders. Think thing is enough? I bet you. It's right on the money. What do you think my odds are that down is off and up is on? I don't know, the key's off right now. <laughs> and I cannot turn that the way you guys are. You guys are standing in my way. Not saying that uh, you need to go on a diet or anything, but come on. Get in there. Get. It's, you know what? I may want to walk, throw a washer on there anyway. Try flipping it over. Watch this is not the one from this. <laughs> I bet you it's the one from the other switch. <laughs> yeah. hey. Can't get one by me. Come on, you would have tried the same thing. There you go. Keon. Watch, nothing works. <laughs> there it goes. Up is on. Hey, 50 50. Once in a while, you get it right. Right? All right. I'm going to tuck that stuff up. And I swapped out the original one. The original one still works. I had a much better, not as hyper of a pace as you're getting your parking ticket. Those are gonna ask. I just put a butt connector in that location, wherever it was. Is that that one? It's that one up in there. But uh, they're not great, but they are better than uh, those stupid things. I know this video is a little on the slow side, but it's you know kind of slowing down, doing wiring. But I don't know. I think there's a bunch of uh, it can't be all carburetors and firing up, doing cold starts. You know what I mean? It's all part of it, and. Uh, Everybody gets anything out of this part of it. It works. Problem is, I'm trying to talk to a different, uh, a, a wide variety of people's abilities. You know what you find interesting and what you don't. So you can't please everybody. Or else you'll please nobody, as the saying goes. Another spider carcass, right there. All right. I can see if I can find one of those little white buttons that we can put over the top of the horn thing, bring the horn back. Just leave everything the same, you know what I mean? That that off-white button that you usually see. back lights are rotted out a little that might be an issue that one has a plate light thing under it I don't know what we're gonna do about the about that 
and the fact that it's filled with uh, critters. Let me see how that sucker's on there. Oh, it's got a bale. We pull the bale out and then the lens will come off. Hmm. I might get some coffee cans or something. Well, it's getting towards the end of the evening. I'm kind of running out of time, but I got something done. As much as I would like to, but this stuff takes a while, you know, chasing all the, those gremlins down. But we're getting closer. I got um, a couple things. The mirror, I'm going to take off. It's broke anyway. But see how that's rusty? You would not believe how hard it is to find a rusty mirror about that size. You would think it would be easy, wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, I got uh, at a swap meet, I got two newer mirrors, you know, just stainless backs and uh, I'll put one on each side. One's already missing. That's where the rag is around it so I don't bash my head off of it like I did a couple of times. Yeah that. So I'm gonna put two new mirrors there, newer, and uh, this one's gonna go on crusty because I need a passenger's mirror for crusty and I need one that looks the part. And that looks the part even including the broken glass on it. <laughs> don't judge. So that's going to get transferred over to there and I'll put the other ones on here. It looks like we're getting pretty close though. I can run it down to the car wash and uh, we can, I got some uh, oven cleaner. We'll throw on the engine. We'll kind of just clean the case up a little bit and pressure wash whatever we can out of it. Hopefully you don't fog it out. The air cleaner I have, it's got a, it's rotted in one spot so it's got to get welded up and uh, get a new element for that. And it's just, you know, it's punky here and there. You can see through the back seam there. It's not hurting anything, but you know, it, it is rotted out. Frame looks good underneath it. But again, I don't know where we're, I'm going with it. We're just having fun and uh, we'll see where it goes. Sometimes life's more enjoyable that way. Instead of having to force what the outcome is. Let the outcome be the, what the outcome wants to be, you know? So, oil it up. I think it'd have a V8 in it by next year. Who knows? <laughs> All right, guys. And with that, I'm gonna go shut her down. And uh, go and get me a burger or something. And uh, a YouTuber sent a pack of these guys in. I'll see if he's in there. No glare on it. You're not gonna be able to read that fine print, but if you want, you can freeze it on this and see what the. So he gave me a whole bunch of those, <laughs> so I'll leave those for uh, busting balls. All right, guys, with that, I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and uh, just playing around with the rusty old junk. Until the next one, I'll see you later. Oh, before I forget, a couple of uh, YouTubers have offered to uh, make up some kind of like magnetic signs that we could put on this so we could run it without saying police down the road and the size of it. You get the tape measure. Oh, you knew that was going to happen, didn't you? All right, so I would say 24 inches just covers it and four inches just covers it. So I definitely give an extra inch each direction or even more, I can go more than that. But yeah, uh, I don't know, what, I'm thinking like dog pound. Let's see if they're all the same size. That would suck, right? Yeah, 24 by four. That means 25 by five, at least. Yeah. All right. Doesn't say it on the front anywhere, right? It does. Well, that one is 19. Three and a quarter just makes it, you know. 
if you guys would uh if you offer and you still want to uh, contribute to uh making them by all means go for it uh, i think there was two people that kind of responded to it so uh i think one was private and one was in the uh the comments but uh or you know have fun with it we could swap it out and put whatever you know we could change a couple of different ones and uh if you come up with something kind of funny and we'll throw it on there we'll change it out each time <laughs> all right all right guys yeah go for it have fun take care we're just hanging here jamming to the radio staring at it and looking at all its glory and uh so why don't i just pick the camera up and uh yammer on some more about it um the vehicle itself just the way it looks and how it's uh appearance and how far do you go on fixing something like this and um should you paint it should you restore it? everybody has opinions on you know what they would like but to me and uh and all those are valid for you know for that person but for me I think that uh, when I look at something like this, it's just, it, it's such an oddball. It's just kind of cool that it's a dorky, goofy thing that has survived. It's 40 years old, uh, had a, uh, a sucky job to do its whole life, just pissing people off. And uh, it's still here and still here enough work to be put back on the road and driven around and, and showing all it's, it's what it's gone through. <laughs> Every person that's kicked it in the front and uh, running off the road and, you know, threw shit at it. And <laughs> I, I just like kind of the way it shows. I like the, sh the fact that we're it's rusting all over the place and, uh, you know, things are worn down and beat up on it. It's just uh, got personality to it. I think um, it's nice seeing stuff that's shown. Uh, it's life in 40 years. It's not fake, you know, whatever happened to it, happened to it. Of course, my camera's blinking now. It's gonna make me stop in the middle. I'll run till it kills me, until it shuts off. <laughs> That's what kills me. Um, so, and it's not worth that much money if you went through the trouble of restoring it and fixing it all up. What's it worth? Five grand all painted, everything nice and pretty and done. I don't know, it's almost kind of worth the, th worth the same thing, just being eclectic and cleaned up and after it's all waxed and, and done, it's almost the same thing and you, you haven't uh, put that much time into it, or in my opinion, lose its personality of the battle scars and everything that's in it. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about it. You run the thing around and, you know, you're not going to be like, ah, I want to scratch the paint. I can run it down a trail if I want. Who cares, you know? So. Just my thoughts. And again, you guys are welcome to uh, envision it as you will. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to envision it the way I see fit and... Uh, We'll see where it goes, you know, and I don't even know where it's going. You know, we're just going to kind of keep picking away at it and uh, and see what happens. It, it, again, it's just more fun that way. You know, why, you know, set yourself up to to make a certain thing? I can do that on the bike builds. This one's it's <laughs> its own. All right, see it.